I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Did you know that the motors on your quadcopter are not just motors, but they're also electric generators? Yep, it's true. And you can use this quality to test whether the motor is damaged or not. That's what we're going to learn about today. Stay tuned. It can be pretty hard to tell when a brushless motor is damaged. I mean, sometimes it's easy to tell that it's damaged, like the windings are all black and cruddy, or it sounds like a box of marbles when you turn it. Okay. But sometimes you've got a quadcopter and the, it's kind of acting weird. Maybe the motor twitches and doesn't spin consistently, or maybe the copter's dropping out of the sky, and you suspect the motor is damaged, but maybe it's the ESC, or maybe it's just your settings, or who knows, right? So you want to test the motor. And some people say that you should test the motor just by taking your multimeter and testing the resistance between the phases. And that'll work if you have a really, really expensive high-end multimeter that can measure milliohms of resistance. Because those phases are just, they're just pieces of wire, and they're not very long pieces of wire. And the resistance is, uh, I don't know for sure, but I speculate it's in the milliohms. The bottom line is, it's such a low resistance that a little 20 or $30 multimeter will just read zero. It can't get down that low. It can't read that precisely. So testing the phases with a multimeter to test the DC resistance is not that effective. As a little side trip, let me just point out here, you might be thinking, well, if the resistance is zero, then how come when the, AC, when the, uh, when the ESC applies current, it's not just like a dead short? And the answer is that we're talking about AC signals. The ESC is making an alternating current signal that rises and falls in a very controlled manner. The ESC controls the current going through the motors, so it's exactly what it needs to be. If you were to just put a, a LiPo battery and short it across the leads, you would just get, well, you get smoke come out, right? The, res the DC resistance is very low, but the AC resistance, when you take into account the inductance of the coil and all that stuff, aha, now it, start it starts to have, well, it, what it has is called impedance, which is different from resistance, but that's a topic for another video. So these motors, if you put an alternating current signal into it, or it's really a PWM signal, but that's kind of like alternating current. If you put a signal into it, you get mechanical work out the, the motor spins and by the same token if you put mechanical work into it if you spin the motor bell you get electricity out and that's what we're going to be looking at today let's go over to the bench and i'll show you an example so i've got my drill here and i've put some reflective tape on the drill head and i'm going to get my uh, optical tachometer out and i'm just going to spin the drill with the trigger pulled all the way and I just want to verify that the drill is spinning at a consistent speed. I'm going to use this drill to spin the motor, and if the drill doesn't spin at a reasonably consistent speed, the results coming out of the motor are not going to be consistent. And we can see here the drill is spinning at just about exactly 2400 RPM. It changes slightly as I hold the trigger down, but it's pretty close to 2400 RPM. If I were really concerned with precision, I might hold the tachometer in my hand while I was running the test, or I might even rig up some kind of a system to hold it at a constant RPM, but that's overkill for what we're doing now. By the way, if you're interested in getting one of these uh, optical tachometers, I'll get, put a link to it down in the video description. It's not too expensive, and it's a pretty nice tool to have around if you deal with spinning things like, oh, motors, props, etc. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting the suspicious motor, I'm chalking it in the drill. You want to be really careful with this so that the, the, the teeth of the chuck don't damage the threads on the motor. Most, uh, most motor shafts are going to have a smooth part at the very base, and if you fully insert the motor shaft into the chuck, the chuck will close on the smooth part. You don't want to clamp it down such that you damage the threads, then you really will have damaged the motor. Now I've gotten my multimeter out, I've got these leads set up, and it is in AC voltage. It's going to be measuring AC voltage, and I'm going to put each of the leads onto one of the motor phases. And there are three wires. I'm just gonna pick any two at random and I'm gonna clip them up. And then I'm gonna hold the motor carefully in my hand and I'm gonna to begin to spin the drill. Oh, oh, the motor wasn't quite centered. Hold on, let me fix that. There we go. Now I'm going to spin the drill, and as I do that, 
you'll see the voltage will rise until I reach full RPMs, 2400 RPMs, and I get just about exactly half a volt out of the motor. Now I'm going to continue my test testing each of the other two phases. I'm just going to switch one of the clips to the other unused wire. And I'm going to spin the drill again. And I get just about half a volt. And then I'm going to take the other clip and switch it to the currently unused wire. And now I will have tested all of the possible combinations of these three wires. And I'm going to spin the motor again. And I get just about exactly half a volt. I'm willing to bet that that little demonstration blew a few of your minds. Some of you are like, yeah, yeah, I know, we've seen this before. I'm willing to bet that blew a few of your minds. The idea that the exact same principles that cause your motor to spin also will cause it to give off AC voltage if you spin it manually, just like a generator, just like the generator that you run when the power goes out, right? or when you're camping, it's exact same principle. You have a spinning uh, rotor head spinning past stators, magnet magnetized stators, and it's generating a current or the other way around. And I think that's pretty freaking amazing that like this translation of electrical energy to mechanical energy, like the principles work forward and in reverse. It's kind of really magical in a way and I don't anyway that's a topic for another day for you know when we've had a few beers or something else maybe but it's really cool that that happens and we can learn from the results that we get out there so we saw that we got a half a volt consistently on all three of the phases and that tells us that those phases are consistent if one phase measured three quarters of a volt and the other two phases measured half a volt Something is not right with the motor. The three phases should be exactly the same. The other thing is if I get another motor, the exact same kind of motor, like that's fresh off the bench, and I spin it, and I see that it registers 0.75 volts, but the, the suspicious motor reg measures 0.5 volts, well, that suggests to us that maybe I should measure all three of them, right, and see which one's the odd man out. The point is that when you, when you have a difference between one phase and the other two, or between one motor and another motor, it might indicate that the one that's different is bad. The demonstration that I just showed you is actually exactly how somebody like Quad McFly, Ryan Harrell, measures the KV of a motor. KV is the uh, voltage constant. And basically it says how many RPMs the motor will try to make when you apply a volt across it. So if I, if I spun that at 2400 RPM and I got a half a volt, then I'm no Quad McFly, but I'm guessing if I were to spin it at 4800 RPM, I would get one volt. And if I understand how this works correctly, it suggests that that is a 4800 RPM or a 4800 KV motor. Now that motor is rated at 3000 KV, so the fact that I tested it and it showed 4,800 kV, well, it's normal for motors to read off by like a 2,600 kV motor might test out at 2,500. But for a motor to test that far off might indicate that something isn't quite right with it. Although I'm not sure about that because I don't have a big background in motor testing. Just for fun, let's take another motor. This is a 2,205, 2,300 kV motor. And uh, we're going to chuck it up and see what it does. If this motor is 2300 kV, then we should get closer to 1 volt when we spin it at 2400 RPM. And sure enough, we do. We're getting about 3 quarters of a volt, 0.75 volts here. There you go. Now you know a few things that you might not have known before you got here. Number one, you know how to calculate a motor's kV uh, experimentally. Uh, you spin it in a drill at a known RPM. You measure the volts that came out of it, and then you take the ratio of how fast you would have to spin it to get one full volt. Of course, if you have a more robust test setup, maybe you can spin it faster instead. I mean, that's uh, certainly one way you could go about it, but st I'm just stuck with this old drill. The other thing you can do is you can use the voltage that the motor puts out when it spins 
as uh, an indicator of the motor's health. The closer it is to the rated KV, then the more likely it is the motor is okay. If it's a little bit different from the rated KV, that's just because rated KV is often not perfectly accurate. But if it's way off from the rated KV, that seems to suggest to me that maybe something isn't right. And if you find any differential between the phases, again, something definitely isn't right. And if you test three or four of the same motor and all of them are the same except one, that one may be, maybe I wouldn't put it on the quad. And this is a super useful trick to have up your sleeve because without having very expensive test equipment that can measure milliohms of resistance or even inductance like a Henry's, uh, measuring inductance, which is measured in Henry's, if you don't have those more expensive tools, you just don't have any way to really quantitatively measure a motor's health. But most of us probably have a drill that we can pull out of the old toolbox and do this test. So hope this is helpful. Leave any questions or comments, anything. I, I'm a little on the edge here because I'm not really a super expert on motors. So if I got something wrong, leave it down in the comments as always. Thanks for watching and happy flying.